in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. We will see today how we can avoid progressive failure. As for progressive failure, it can occur as a result of, for example, destruction or a specific attack on one of the buildings. For example, an airstrike on the world, trade tower, or an attack on a plane or a rocket. This is exactly what happened before the World Trade Tower. The British Code talking about something like this in 1985. And then, of course, it was updated later and it was adopted by the American Code. What we mean now is how can a part of a building damage? The whole building does not collapse. This is the question we will try to answer today, either by, for example, a terrible explosion that cuts the pillars below and leads to the collapse of the building, or an attack from above that will cause the building to collapse, and the building will be, and the pillars will carry more than its weight at times as a result of the force of the shock. And this is how progressive failure will occur, which we will try to avoid. The ultimate is that I avoid the collapse as a result of design factors. That is, the building may collapse as a result of failure of one of the elements or more than one element, or there may be overturning or buckling as we see in the three pictures in front of us. This is called the ultimate limit states, but there is something else called the serviceability limit states. This affects the shape of the building itself. It accounts for the deformation, but it does not collapse as a result of vibration or cracking in the building, or it accounts for any deformation. This is called serviceability and deflection is one of these types. What we want to say now in terms of progressive failure, it is normal that we design any building in the world. Very normal on dead walls, windows, earthquakes, etc. Of course, I will take this screenshot from the British code. It did not take into account the seismic load in its considerations and put a place called the national load. It takes 1% of the weight of each floor at each level. What we are dealing with now is the robustness. What is robustness? Robustness is to make the building so that it avoids progressive failure. This is the story we want to talk about today. Robustness, it tells you that you should not, you can't design a building that is exposed to something like this. I will not design all the buildings in the world on this principle. It will be very difficult for me to design all the buildings if there is an accident or something. Of course, there are certain important buildings we can design. It, if it is exposed to an accident or a terrorist attack, then we put in it the theory of robustness, which is the connection of the building elements together in one way or another to prevent progressive failure. How? We connect the internal elements together, all the internal elements together, and also the periphery elements and the pillars together connected in two directions, and also each element above and below continuous vertical ties and Finally, there is a synchronous connection, as you can see, right, left, down, like the exterior of the columns and the wall tiles. This is a very expensive process if you want to do something like this, but in the end, this is the realization of the requirements of robustness. After that, we will see how robustness, how to deal with the British code and the American code. I, I explained the British code in the last revolution, and it is discussed here in the slide. On the left for the American code, it is the same, and it talks specifically about robustness. The present technique enhances the structure. The man made a paper based on the ACI. It talks about the technique involving placing sterner or unbound steel cables attached to continuous beams on all the doors and so on. All the connections that we talked about in the last picture, it does it through cables. How will this be done? It is a very good point. How do we do it? 
It is a real analysis in nature. He said, you make a model on this basis. Any numerical model, a computer you can achieve. This requirement, you do a type of analysis. It is called a push-down analysis. What is this push-down analysis? It is called column elimination. Each column is removed. This is what we mean. This is an important point. We consider a column that has a failure, and we see the effect of the column next to it. The column falls, the rest are removed, and so on and so on. If there is a camera or similar, of course, it is a very complicated process, but you can make it a numerical model. This is how we saw it. Of course, this is different from what is currently done in the topic of Earthquakes, earthquakes deal with buildings depending on its category. Either you do something called ordinary moment, resisting frame or intermediate moment, resisting frame or special moment, resisting frame. How do we know the alignment of the columns together and the position of the channels in the columns and their iron and cameras in these three areas of the earthquake we We'll not talk about the areas of the earthquake, but we say, depending on the intensity of the earthquake, the elements of the building are cut. So we have to put a specific iron for this with a specific configuration, this configuration. If there is a weak earthquake or consider the earthquake as an unimportant degree, we will compare the spacing between the channels. Here in these three forms, we find that here it has a value, and here it has a lower value, and here it has a lower value we supplement it in one way or another. Also, the alignment of the iron at the position of the column, we see here how the spacing is, and also the iron stop in the middle, which is their overlap. In contrast, here it is in the lower third, or in the first connection with the bolt and so on. Also, the alignment of the cameras, if you are in an ordinary moment resisting frame, how is it aligned? Intermediate. And finally, in the special, if it is a high earthquake area. If you study this, I think this is my effort. If you stick to the special resisting frame, you will achieve a very large part of the robustness requirements. But due to the lateral load, not due to the accidental load. 